It's time to keep having fun tonight. Well, we think so. I mean, for some people, satirical songs are kind of frustratingly annoying. But many of us think they're fabulous. They divide people, I suppose. They can offend people. They can fall as flat as a pancake or they can just be genius and artfully put in music what you can't say, I suppose, in conversation. We're looking at satirical songs this hour and Bernard Zool will help us unpack a box of great satirical songs and acts. But first, they are back. This is Serious Mum, or Tism, with a balaclava-clad boy band of blistering takedowns in the 80s and the 90s. They hate-mocked many, from dictators to celebrities, from what they called the wankers to the tryhards, the overly earnest, the self-important. They were the rock and roll rat bags, and they liked to really slaughter some sacred cows. While many were offended, many absolutely loved Tism or are entertained by their avid insights into the ridiculous nature of humanity. And let's face it, they great hooks in their songs. They were great fun and amazing on stage. Well, 19 years on and Tism are back. A gig at the Good Things Festival with the Deftones, Cosmic Psychos, Regurgitator and many more. It's happening on the 3rd of December at Centennial Park in Sydney and a couple of other dates around the country and other states. I spoke to Ron Hitler-Barassi and Humphrey B. Flaubert via Zoom in Melbourne and I asked them how and why this happened and you know what? I got some serious answers down the track. We're, we're really kind of here to say that things weren't all that good back in the old days. You know, we're, we're kind of the, we're sort of like nowadays um, uh, you get, you get uh, um, cooking critics being nominated for Logies. But uh, back, back in, in the sort of uh, 80s and 90s, you, um, you know, food w- wasn't really an art form. It was, it was your Chico roll. And, and we're kind of the Chico roll of music you know that sort of um Mm. it's not like a spring roll which is made of that kind of beautiful flaky uh, crisp pastry a a chico roll has the consistency of a scab and um when when you're eating a chico roll there's always the danger that the bottom bit will fall out and the inside which is the color of death uh and (laughs) consisting of vaguely sort of indeterminate uh, uh uh, animal penis uh, lands in your lap and is so hot that your genitals go on fire. And that is the sort of, uh, that that's what nostalgia is all about. We're about that kind of lousy food experience that I don't think people have enough of these days. I mean, you go to a service station at Quambatook and they're giving you a red wine jus. I mean, really. And, and the and, and today's bogans drink craft beer. So right. yeah. is a terrible thing. All right. What, what about with, with the coming back in terms of that? Will you take off the balaclavas like Kiss did when they reformed? Is it time to unmask yourself? I think it is, Sarah. I mean, I think that's a very good suggestion. Um, I also think, Sarah, you know, what we've found out now that we've come back is we're actually now far more popular than we were ever the 19 years ago. And, you know, the reason why we came back is we actually took a little leaf, like a lot of people do, out of John Howard's book. You see, John, we saw him at the last election, gormlessly walking around suburban shopping centres, toddling along, and everyone loves him. And we took one look at that and thought, I think we could do that. Well, I don't know if his statements about groupies and the teals went down a treat, but, you know, the tracksuits could be coming on then instead of some of your other outfits, perhaps. Certainly groupies are outside our experience. You know, Sarah, this is true. The back, backstage at a Tism concert always looked like a sort of a rugby union. It was just full of rugby union blokes drinking um, beer. But as Humphrey points out now, they wouldn't be doing that, would they, Humphrey? They'd be drinking their, you know, um, boutique gins. I would yeah, assume, right. you know, the craft yeah. gin, hmm. that sort of thing. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you, you don't get a, you don't quite get the, the proper bogan experience these days, Sarah. You know, like there's there's this kind of uh, postmodern bogan. Um, I, I, you know, I refer to bands like uh, the Chats, 
and you know, uh, Amel and the Snippers. Like they yeah. What do you think of those bands? They're a kind of craft beer. I mean, they're they're wonderful and everything. Um, you know, they're far better than I am, but they they're a craft beer drinking bogan. They're a postmodern bogan, um, and I think that uh, what we're kind of promising to the good thing people is mm. is something more along the lines of the the jet skiing on barrier reef type of bogan you know the the doof, the doof music on uluru kind of bogan well it is a time that you know the whole mullet is now very private school kid so I think, you know, you, your timing is very interesting. I mean, there are always rumours about you and I'm wondering if you're all sort of QCs now and judges perhaps, upstanding standing members of society. Oh, yes, Sarah. Don't, don't, you, uh, don't get the wrong idea. I wasn't suggesting that any of us are, uh, you know, sort of the solid proletariat types. I mean, no, no. we're in this to increase our property portfolios. Fair enough. Tism is on the uh, line with us as they come back for the Good Time Festivals, Ron and Humphrey. Here's the thing. We live in pretty narcissistic times. I'm wondering if your if you BS meter that detests self-importance and wankerism has been going off in the last few years quite a lot, and that's also brought you back to us. Oh, that's a tough one, Sarah, because that mm. kind of... Uh... Uh, I think that imputes a certain amount of responsibility on us to to set the world right, um, but really uh, we're 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 worse than any of the uh, of of these people who are so called um, you know the the wankers. I mean, um, look at us. Uh, we're we're throwing in um, uh, references, uh, poetic references in our songs. Um, it's it's a, it's a shameful uh, uh, showing off of our faux university uh, uh, backgrounds. So I don't think we're, we're in it for, for necessarily, we're not really coming back to kind of right the wrongs of society. Uh, we're, we're sort of coming back like, um, sort of like the drunken uncle at Christmas. That's how I see it. Oh, we love him. That's great. Money for it. We do live in a time of kind of just instant fury, you know, sort of dial up anger overreaction, outrage. What is this going to mean for TISM performing? Uh, we won't be able to say or do anything, Sarah. And we actually feel that that's a correct uh, situation. Like, we are a bunch of old, white, middle-class males. Like, our day has been done, Sarah. Look look, look at the, what where the world's been left um, after the rule of the white, middle-class male. Could you get a bigger stuff-up? Like, is there is there anyone more self righteous than the self funded retiree or um, the the gas executive or the member of a Morrison cabinet boasting on their um, male chest about their ability to wheel and deal and use the markets and their importance to society? And look where society's got look where society's at, Sarah. You know, it's a mess. So one of our um, performance art techniques in these new um, shows will be to not appear on stage, not play any songs and be replaced by younger, more diverse, more interesting and more worthy voices. Now, they, we won't be paying them, Sarah. We won't be paying them. They won't be getting any money. We'll still be taking all the money that um, the good things people are giving us. But I tell you what's more important, they'll be getting a voice, Sarah. So they'll be like TISM interns. Yes, that's very, very right. Um, I feel that what's a blow actually to a performance is the recent wage decision because the minimum wage has gone up. Now, Sarah, we were going to play 19 songs and I'm not sure we can afford that anymore. We might be cutting it down to 17 songs. Uh, it's, you know, it's a, it's a hard job running a business these days and these new alternative voices that we're going to promote, we'll just have to put up with that. Language has really changed. There's a greater awareness of the power. It can do damage in context as everything, of course, in, in your songs. Are there some songs you won't do? Are you writing new songs? Oh, um, you know, obviously we're doing uh, a full set of Kid Leroy songs. You know, that's, that's our plan. We sort of feel that um, that will uh, um, enrage the uh, the people who go to the Good Things Festival and uh, they'll set upon each other in an orgy 
uh, of bone and flesh. But it is a good question. Like we, we genuinely have thought about this. Like there are some things in our old um, lyrics that we we wouldn't we wouldn't uh, repeat again. And and uh, th th there's a fine line to tread. I would hate to think that there's some people that we could offend, and it doesn't matter what anyone says we won't take a backward step. But there are other um, allusions and references, even though that, I mean, they were never meant to be offensive, that now um, in this new context, as you say, Sarah, w you, you just have to think more carefully. But, you, you know, you get, like, I know that um, ABC After Dark is an extremely right-wing um, uh, media broadcasting ecosystem. But the, 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 point, that, the point that we're trying to... Um, that people say is, oh, you can't say anything anymore. You know, it, it, you, 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 you think, no, no, that's not right. You've just got to be considerate of other people. So there is a certain um, second guessing that we do, but we think it's a legitimate process that we're going through. Look, Sarah, what's happened just then is I've given you the only real answer Tism's ever given on a media interview. Yep. I know, and I'm wondering if it really is or not, but it sounded it. I'm struggling mm. at the moment, Sarah. Mm. I, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, I think mm. that uh, I, I'll have to quit. <laughs> We're all freaking out. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you know, I just, look, I think I'm sick of the clowning. I, I just think that we should, from now on, Sarah, we'll, in, we'll answer every question seriously. So what is your next question? <laughs> Have you got a new song? Like, are you writing again? I'm wondering what's attracting your observations. It's typical of your right-wing racist drivel that you've been uh, spewing out on the ABC after dark for years now. You know you're one of the biggest vectors for um, Trump's conspiracy theories? I'm not sure if you know it, Sarah, but there's an electorate down here called Q. Q. Can you believe that? And also Q, as in the conspiracy theory. And everyone in the electorate of Q is very sexually adventurous. Also, I want you to know that, um, that can you imagine what would have happened at the January 6 riots if all those people had been African-Americans? That's the sort of reality you right-wing shock jocks won't recognise. Sarah, anyway. uh, uh, Sarah we, we've actually... Uh... We are writing some new songs, and they're really good. We've um, we've written a song uh, from the female perspective, which I think is a terrible, um, you know, a, a terrible risk. But um, I think uh, when you get to hear it, um, I'm hoping that you will feel that we have captured the the female perspective uh, in the right way, in the in the kind of sensitive way. In the female perspective of what lived experience. Well, I haven't lived as a female, but um, certainly um, I do know females, and um, <laughs> so uh, I've spoken to some of them. Sarah, Humphrey's just given you the second serious answer ever to a media question, and I feel I have to resign. Well, why don't we finish it off there? I feel just so lucky to have got that, that let's quit while we're ahead, but it's been wonderful to chat to you, and we'll look forward to seeing you on stage. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Ron Hitler-Barassi and Humphrey B. Flaubert from a Zoom line in Melbourne. They're playing the Good Things Festival with the Deftones, Cosmic Psychos, Regurgitator and more, 3rd of December, Centennial Park. Why the secret, boys? Well, because they always said they didn't want at 50 to have to have their face matched to a song they put out when they were young. Now they're 50. They've got to keep their identity still secret. Far bet, says Jane. These guys are fantastic. More great satire in songs after this. By Tism, Greg, The Stop Sign. What's your favourite satirical song? The guy who slagged the football team, those jobs were not for him. He turns into a real estate agent who believes in discipline. The guy who's first to use cocaine, the wild boy breaking free. He'll end up in a court of law as a prosecuting QC. Remember the school captain? Success was a matter of time. I can hear her now as she screams. Greg, you missed the stop sign. Forget Snoop Doggy Dog. Forget Old Ice Tea. The true word out on the streets is produced by the DAC. What's the use of striving? Last road in front of rebels. We get to do the driving. Don't choose the direction we travel. Do your homework and wait for weeks. Completely the damn no lie. It don't matter much when you hear that scream. Greg, you missed the stop sign. Greg, the stop sign. 
stop sign. Break the stop sign. Break the stop sign. Sometime in the next 10,000 years, a comet's gonna wipe out all trace of man. I'm banking on it, coming before my end of year exam. The rich kid becomes a junkie. The poor kid an advertiser. What a tragic waste of potential. Being a junkie's not so good either. Your folks worked out for what you got. Greg, the stop sign. That's the funniest interview I've heard on the ABC in a long time, says the texter. Love your work. But then <laughs> Stephen Elizabeth Bay goes, Tism? No. Switched off. I love this satire or not. That description of the Chico role was horrifyingly on point. It actually was a bit, wasn't it? Jess says, that's a bit weird to tune into. Look, Tism were weird. Unapologetically so. They didn't care about popularity. They didn't care about offending anybody. And yet... Amazingly popular and coming back. We thought we'd leap from them into other satirical acts in music. What do you think of them? They do divide. Bernard Zool is helping us on this tonight, and you can text in your favourite on 0467 922 702. 1300 222 702 is the number to call.